Thank you, thank you, thank you. The clock. Great, 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 great. Boy, I've met a lot of people saying great, 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 great. And just for all of you who've been saying it in your own language, it doesn't work. It works in English. Uh, well, let's get serious for a moment. I came a long journey to be here to speak to you today. And I think a lot of you in this room had a long journey to be here today. I live on a farm in Canada. It's beautiful there. It's the weather, and the t it's a little bit like here in that it's cold and snowy in the winter, but it's rolling hills. That's my farm, that's my garden, and uh, my wife's tractor. And <laughs> oh, I ain't kidding, she does all the physical work. She's the, the, the guy in the relationship, I'm the sissy. <laughs> We've raised uh, five children on the farm. And about 20 years ago, my daughter Kate, who was 13 at the time, came to me and said, Daddy, they've opened an aromatherapy store in the village. Will you drive me there so I can see it? And whilst Kate was looking around the store, I got talking to the owner of the store. Her name was Sandy. And whilst Kate was looking around, Sandy said to me that she'd given up her, her job, her big career in the city in Toronto to work on a project which was her passion, which was aromatherapy. And I said, well, you know, it's funny you should say that, Sandy, because I'm thinking about getting out of photography because in 20, 25 years, I've met so many people with incredible potential, unbelievable potential, but no people skills. They're kind of like a rose with a rubber band around it, and they will never blossom until someone takes the rubber band off. I said, I'm, going to, I'm not going to stop talking about it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get out of photography, and I'm going to start start doing that. I said, because we live in a world where millions of introverts are forced to masquerade as extroverts to make a living, and it doesn't always come easy. We live in a world where millions of children are being raised by parents who have no people skills. What's to become of kids whose parents have got no people skills? We live in a world where we're told we should be leaders, and yet we live in a culture of blame. Look at the headlines. Listen to the news. Someone's always blaming somebody else. You cannot be a leader if the word blame is in your vocabulary because it means you have external locus of control. If you have internal locus of control, which I hope you all have, it means you take full responsibility for everything you do, which means that you can learn by your mistakes. Most people have external locus of control, which means they blame other people for stuff. Oh, it was the politicians, it was the doctors, it was the, it was the traffic. I'm late because of the weather. No, you're not. You're late because you didn't plan properly. But you, and we live in a world where we are brought up to avoid taking risks, and yet by taking risks is the only way we can grow. We are either growing or you're going in this life. It's growth or decay. It's the second law of thermodynamics. And so I'm telling all this to Sandy. And she said, well, I think that's great. That's a great project. She said, but what's your gift? Maybe it's that I, you know, I can make complicated things sound simple and interesting. She said, fine, that's your gift. A week and a half later, I get a phone call from Sandy. She said, I'm having some people around to my house to talk about aromatherapy. Would you like to come and talk about your project, what you're doing? I said, yeah, I'd love to. So I went around to her house and I spoke to the little group of people there. Four days later, I get a phone call from a woman saying, I was at Sandy's house the other night. I heard you talk. I'm part of a woman's networking group in the region there. And we meet the first Tuesday of every month in the restaurant. And uh, would you like to come and talk to the group? I said, yeah. I went and spoke to the group. A couple of weeks later, I get a phone call from a guy saying, my cousin was at that woman's networking group. I have 200 real estate agents in the region. Could you put on a workshop for them? <laughs> yeah. And so I went and I did it. Exactly seven weeks later, I get a phone call from a company that said, we're the staging company for AT&T Canada. We've been following you. We'd like to invite you to be the kickoff speaker at the National Convention for AT&T Canada at the Metro Convention Centre in Toronto to speak to 1,600 people. So I went. I went and I did it. And it set my career on fire. Before long, I was... In, in New York, uh, getting a book deal and 
uh, and getting on the TV, and my book started to go everywhere. Moral of the story, never turn down an invitation from your 13-year-old daughter to visit an aromatherapy store <laughs> that's just opened in your local village because opportunities are everywhere, but you have to go out and find them. But when people, purpose, projects, and passion come together, Fear and doubt go out the window. Opportunities and lucky breaks come through the front door and your potential goes through the roof. Because the magic of talking to strangers is you never know who you're talking to. I'm sure, so that was my journey here today. That was a long journey. And I have to tell you, because some people say, well, I want to hear about the tough times. I just want you to know, it isn't all lucky, but there are sleepless nights and there are bills to be paid, but you know what? I wasn't giving up, and I went on and on and on and on until I got an offer to go to New York, to Workman Publishing in New York, met Peter Workman at Workman Publishing, and left with a six-figure advance. Well over $100,000 in my hands. So you keep at it, and it works. And I know you've all had the same, you've all had, a, when I'm joking when I say you have a long journey here today, you've all been through it since you were kids to get here today, and you've met strangers along the way, and you've talked to strangers along the way. Because life doesn't happen without talking to strangers. Whatever it is you want in this life, whether it's a fantastic education, whether it's a fantastic job, whether it's tickets to the FA Cup, chances are you'll need to talk to a stranger to get them. You'll need a stranger's help to get them. And if you can understand that, you can understand one of life's greatest, simplest truth. Life doesn't happen without talking to strangers. Nothing happens without talking to strangers. So, who are these strangers? Well, I've interviewed more than 3,000 people to write my books. My books are not based on what Nick thinks. My books are based on Nick going out, interviewing people, and, and, and finding their strategies. So I've, it, all together, to write my three books, which are all basically about talking to strangers and the words to use, I have, uh, and I found it much easier to d divide these strangers into these five categories. It makes it much easier to talk to them. And if you're going to start talking to strangers and you're a little bit nervous about it, well, first of all, we have familiar strangers. So these are opportunities that you can immediately start talking to. And this includes the people who sit next to you on the train, on the bus, on the plane, or even here, if you're sitting next to a stranger. Uh, here's a tip. When you sit down on a plane or on a bus or somewhere like here where you're sitting next to a stranger, just say something as you sit down. Say, good morning or hi or excuse me or I'm going to sit. Say anything because you've actually broken the ice. Then if you want to talk to them again or say something later, you've already spoken to them once. And the ice is broken. So how do we talk to, well, familiar strangers? Uh, the best way to talk to anybody, and it gets easier as you get older, is what I call assuming rapport. You just assume you know the person. With, I was in a, an art gallery the other day, and I'm just standing looking at something, and a, and a woman comes and stands next to me. She's actually synchronized my body language. And she just said, nice, isn't it? I said, yeah, it is nice. And we just start talking like we're cousins or something. That's the, the best way is to, to practice assuming rapport with people. And uh, look for, look for uh, free information. You get free information by the way you introduce to some, yourself to somebody. If I say, hi, I'm Nick, they might say, hi, I'm Fred. If I say, hi, I'm Nick Booth, and they might say, hi, I'm Fred Johnson. I say, hi, I'm Nick Booth, and I live in Canada. Oh, hi, I'm Fred Johnson, I live in Norway. And the more information you give out, and if they don't give it back, you say, and you? And you can get lots of free information about people that way. Uh, total Digital distractions, polarized politics, and personal correctness are driving us all apart. They're making strangers out of all of us. And the result is an epidemic of isolation, loneliness, sadness, depression, and nastiness among all generations, among all socioeconomic groups, and across countries and across borders. It's happening everywhere. It's time for a change. You can be the the agents, the, the angels have changed. Let's start talking to the strangers who are our neighbors to find out what we can learn from each other. Not just the things we agree on, but the things we disagree on, because that's where the learning and the knowledge begin, and the leadership begins. Let's talk to people to find hope, to share joy, to, to make our world go around. Let's talk to strangers to make magic, because the benefits of talking to strangers are surprising and unexpected. Here are my top 10 simple ones. Some of them make so much sense, I'm not even going to explain them. 
when you can talk to strangers, you get and become more confident. When you can talk to strangers, you stay healthier. Lisa Berkman from UCLA and her team looked at 9,000 people over seven years, and they determined that people who actively socialized, talked to strangers, went out and met new people, were three times less likely to die of medical illness than those who didn't. We come alive when we're talking to strangers. Longer. So, uh, so what's holding you back? What's holding us back from meeting new people? Perhaps you're scared of strangers. That's not surprising. We're brought up being told not to talk to strangers. Maybe you don't know what to say. Or maybe you're not thinking straight. If you're scared of talking to strangers, start slow for a week. Just notice the color of the eyes of the people you pass by, all of them. I went on the, the Today Show, and the host said, OK, Nick, so I walk into a room full of strangers. What do I do? Tell me five ways to come across as socially smarter. This is what I told them. Number one, wear great clothes. Uh, people will take you more seriously. They don't have to be expensive clothes, but they have to be stylish or, oh, great. More people will take notice of you. Because when people wear great clothes, we, we kind of notice them. When they're wearing bad clothes, we notice their clothes. Um, when you walk into a room full of strangers, head for the middle. The perception is that the people in the middle of the room are the popular people. That's why in English we call the people around the outside the wallflowers. Go stand in the middle of the room. As you go into the middle so of the room, but today you've got to make nine new connections, each of you talking to, to each other. And so, what do you say, though, when you meet someone? Because this is the great thing. This is the, the great truth about face-to-face -face communication. You are a genius until you open your mouth. So, so, so what do you... But, you know, we don't teach our kids at school. We don't teach them how to start a conversation. We say, you've got to be a good listener. So poor old little Willie, he goes up to a group of guys, and he goes... And they say, who's this idiot? Poor old Willie. No one said to Willie, this, this, is, this is how you start a conversation. And you start a conversation the way that the talk show hosts do it on television. You just watch it or on the radio. But here's the big one. Perhaps you're not thinking straight. I'm going to tell you a story. I was contacted by a group called RED, W-R-E-D, Women in Rural Economic Development. And Red helped women who were living in the rural areas whose lives were just awful. Well, on this one particular occasion, this woman came. Her name was Susan. So she went. She didn't want to be there. She was a large woman. She was an angry woman. And, uh, and, but the first thing I do with them is I say, give me 10 words to describe yourself. Because the thing is, most people, including me until I do this, we cannot describe ourselves accurately. And if you can't describe yourself accurately, you can't become inspired. Now, when, I asked, when we asked Susan, Susan, give me 10 words to describe yourself. Three of the words she, she gave me, now, forgive me for, for, for saying this, but, but she said, I'm a bitch. Well, she also said, I'm negative. I'm negative, and I'm shy. The way I started this was to say that imagine yourself before you were born, you found yourself in a lineup, and in your hand you had a small piece of paper. On that piece of paper, you had to write down why you had to be born. This is just in your imagination. You get to the front of the line, they look at your paper, and they say, that's no good, go to the back and try again, because the only, the only condition it has to be a benefit to society, because we know we have evolution. <laughs> and if it's good, they say, fine, you can get born now. So they send you to the su supply department. They outfit you uh, with all the attributes, the human attributes you need to carry out this little mission. Uh, and then off you go and get born. But unfortunately for you, they tire up your piece of paper and they wipe your memory. So here you find yourself like everybody else, knowing you are uniquely equipped for something, but you don't know what it is. We've all felt that way. So we have to look at what did they actually put inside us? Well, in Susan's case, of course they didn't put bitch inside her. So what did they put? And when we looked a little closer, it turns out Susan has high standards. What happens to a woman who's got high standards living on a farm with four really rough guys? They say, you're a bitch. And that's what she believed, but no, Susan had high standards. When, they, when she said, I'm negative, I said, what do you mean, Susan? She said, well, I hear someone say something and I think, I knew that, I could have said that. Or someone said, I knew that, I could have said that. Said, Susan, that's not negative, that's competitive. Oh, so now she's not a bitch, and she's not negative. She's competitive with high standards. 
And when you said, shy, well, there's no such thing as shy. Nobody was born shy. The only reason people know they're shy is because someone told them they're shy when you're four years old. And someone says to Willie, I want to invite Willie to a party. Oh, yeah, but you know he's shy. Well, he's also listening, huh? Hello? <laughs> Turns out Susan wasn't shy. She was, uh, she was cautious. And so only when you can describe yourself accurately can you start to improve your life. Look, your life can't go on if you're describing yourselves incorrectly, and it makes me very passionate. Anyway, three years later, I'm walking through the, I'm walking through the, the International Plaza Hotel in Toronto by the airport. I'm doing a speech there, and I hear, the, I tear up now for sure, I hear a voice saying, hey, Nick. And I turn around. I said, help me. I said, Nick, it's, it's me. It's Susan. I said, Susan, what are you doing here? She said, I'm now with the Ministry of Agriculture, and three of my teams have meetings here today. That was what the transformation. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. We need the emotional input of each other. Take away our physical and our emotional connections with each other, and we will wither and die just as much as if you took away the food we eat and the air we breathe. But when strangers get together, joy and knowledge can be shared, love, hope, can be found, food can be grown, diseases can be cured, and miracles can happen every day, every hour, and every minute. Because, because the biggest miracle of all is you. Thank you.